everybody, welcome to another episode of Talk the Talk. Today we're driving Michael's 2001 R34 GTR, and that's the same Michael that had the yellow FD RX7 that we reviewed. So he's got some pretty cool toys tucked away, and he's got a few more that he's actually willing to let us drive. So you may have seen my other review that I did on the 34 GTR, same color as well. We didn't really get to hit any decent driving roads in that video and unlike that one this one is actually modified this one's got the n1 turbos in it so it's still running a twin turbo system the n1 turbos they're one size up from the uh, factory size turbos and they've also got steel wheels so with the factory turbos you got your ceramic wheel turbos and after about 15 psi it's a bit of a gamble you might actually shatter the wheels and you might actually blow your engine, which isn't good. So these ones here are currently running 19 PSI of boost, and he's making 290 kilowatts at all four wheels, which equates to around 390 horsepower at all four. He's got supporting mods such as a uh, blitz downpipe and a Kakamoto exhaust, and he's also got a boost controller as well, or AFM controller, so that he can up the boost and have a little bit of fun. Aesthetically, he's got the LMGT4 wheels on it, the Nismo wheels, which I think look really great on this car. Really toughen it up over the stock wheel look. Simple five spoke, but it looks real aggressive. Talking about aggressive, the front bar as well. It's a Nismo S-tuned front bar. Few more cuts in it, a little bit more bulky. He's got the V-spec lip as well. Again, just makes it look real angry when it's coming up at you in the rear view mirror. Suspension wise, he's got the Teen Monoflex system and he can actually electronically control it. Underneath the head unit, you flap it down, you can change all your settings. He's got a few presets. From memory, there were three that you can have or you can play around with it, see what harshness that you want with it. For this drive here, I've got it on medium setting. Don't want to break my back, at the same time want to have fun and I don't want the camera shaking around too much. All right, let's get straight into it and have a bit of fun with this car. As usual, hold on and enjoy. Man, you can just accelerate around the corner. <laughs> the actual, the all-wheel drive system is pretty nuts. You don't have to be too careful with it when you're actually going around the corner. Again, you don't want to be going flat foot, but that's getting on to boost, 5,000 RPM around the corner and it's not wanting to slide around at all. It's got Nitto Invo tires all round, which really do help this thing stick. And they're not cheap, but they do the job well. Now from factory, you really start to build boost up around the 3,500 RPM mark. But because these are a slightly bigger turbo and they've got the steel wheels as well, it's a little bit more laggy to get up there, but only by about 500 RPM. So drop down to second gear, hold it at around 4,000 RPM, plant it, and you're on boost. By the time you hit five, you're gone, and it just keeps on winding all the way out. The RB26 that's in this car, it actually is a really smooth engine. Yes, it's a bit aggressive once you actually get the boost coming in, but while it's off boost, while it's on boost, and you're actually climbing through the actual RPM range, it's very smooth, it's not very jagged, very linear as it comes on, and it's very nice. There's not a lot of vibration through the cabin from the actual engine, even though this thing does rev out quite a bit. But you just give it some, and very, very nice power delivery. Coming down here, bit of a decline, around the corner. Holding the res around 5,000 RPM on the boost. Way off the boost, throws you forward. Let's just get right into it, wind it right out. Oh, beautiful. Just keeps on climbing in RPM, keeps on climbing in speed. Really, really nice delivery in this car. I'm not sure if this is actually in the frame here, but there's a heads up display which shows a number of different uh, values through the car. You can see your boost pressure, 
how much torque you're actually putting down and then a whole bunch of other things like lap timers as well through this system. You can change where the actual rev light comes on. There's a shift light right in the top right hand corner and you can change it to whatever RPM you want. Really cool if you're hitting the track or if you're going on a Sunday drive and you want to feel like you're a race car driver. Now put it down to second gear, a little bit higher RPM now, 5,000, wait until we're straight. Give it some and it just goes, it loves it. Now this thing, like I said before, 390 all wheel horsepower, no. It's not a 1,000 all wheel horsepower car, it's not a 900, 800 all wheel horsepower car. A lot of you guys out there are going to comment, it's not much power for a GTR, you could make so much more. Who cares? This car is fun. And you know what? Michael's got a 1,000 horsepower R33 GTR in the garage. So he doesn't have to make all his cars fast and prove a point. This thing here, it does what it needs to do. This thing's fun. It goes through corners like there's no tomorrow. It just handles it. And you can drive this thing so easily. One hand on boost. It's all good. It just really is a great handling car got enough power to have fun but keep you out of trouble just get into it and third and round the corner again you're accelerating and it just doesn't matter it's actually a joy to drive it's so easy to drive and it's so fun to drive and this thing here was built in 2001 it's not all the gizmo gadgets and stuff like that that all these cars come out with these days Yes, it does have amazing technology for the day. The all-wheel drive system alone is incredible. But it's still raw enough and it's still mechanical enough that you can get that sensation of acceleration and you can get that sensation of speed. And just go through it. Oh, man. I love that sound. Blow-up valve in this thing is amazing. Just all the little hisses and the bangs and the whooshes. And the actual backfire in this car, when I started driving it, I thought there was something loose in the actual boot, or the trunk for you Americans. But it was actually the car backfiring, you can feel it under your ass, and it's just one of those things again, cars with theatre, they're so enjoyable to drive. Now we just come, hold it in second gear around these corners, second gear is a lot of fun, going in 70, 80 k's an hour, around 50 miles an hour and you just get to enjoy all the sounds and you get the massive push back and pull forward when you're actually on and off boost. So out the corner, give it some. It's just gone, beautiful. And you know what? It still stands up to the test of time. This thing is fun. It's awesome. Oh yeah. And the good thing about this as well, it's practical. It's not like your Supras or your RX-7s or your S15s where everybody's cooped up in the back. Yeah, it's a bit tight in the back for someone that's six foot tall, but if you're going on short trips and you've got four adults in here, it's not like you're crammed and you feel like you can't breathe. It's actually quite good in here. All right, now we've got a long stretch of road ahead of us. Scott Michael behind us. I'll do not a crazy launch, but we'll do a bit of a zero to 100, see what this thing's like. Rev it up a bit. And go, a little bit of bog down with the all-wheel drive and the turbo. But it just goes, you're grabbing the gear, 8,000 RPM. Beautiful. Does it without a worry, and you know what? Chuck it in six gear. You can't even hear the engine, you can't hear the exhaust. Feels great. Very good combination of relaxation driving this car and fun. You don't always have to be on edge. You can down the boost a little bit. You can make the suspension a bit softer. Everything is there at your fingertips. It's kind of like an all-in-one in this car. And drove the other one, was impressive stock. Mainly did main roads, but getting out here, you really get to appreciate the all-wheel drive system, the power delivery of this car, the handling of it, just everything. And the brakes on this car are upgraded as well. They're two-piece rotors, so it is like a full race spec car for the street. Again, not crazy power, but very, very enjoyable power. And you know what? When this happens, like you can complain. Hi there, my name is Michael. 
this is my 2001 R34 GTR. I ended up with this car last year. So I guess the motivation to get one was I saw where the market was going for these. They're getting a bit expensive. So I didn't want to, you know, I guess miss out. So when this one popped up, I jumped on it. It's a fairly mild setup. This one is just sitting on TN coilovers. It's got N1 turbos, uh, Power FC, again tuned by Checker Tuning, so thanks Trendcat. And pretty much um, no future plans for this car either. Happy with the way it looks, happy with the way you know it goes. And the other thing I'm worried about is probably hurting the resale value if I go through crazy <laughs> with modifications. So she's actually quite a nice car to drive. It fits four adults comfortably in here and AC's ice cold, all the things that didn't really seem important <laughs> a long time ago, but yeah, it's nice when everything actually works. Well, everybody, that wraps up another episode of Talk the Talk. Hope you enjoyed the fun here again. As usual, please give a like and subscribe if you want to see some more awesome cars. Thank you to Michael once again for the FDR X7 review for the R34 GTR. And next up, we've got his 300 ZX as well. Things been through a bit of work, bit of fun, but as usual, I'll catch you next time. Drive safe and enjoy.